guys. Welcome back to JD in the Sump Seat. Thank you so much for uh, watching. Um, all right, here we go. The primed unit, one corner side. Um, so I like to use at this step inks. Um, basically, I've primed with black, used some gray as highlights, and then did the metallic. Um, Basically, this step right here is taking away a little bit of the metallic on the wall and after we're and highlighting some areas that are going to be seen. Um, we're going through this pretty quick here. We're also going to be highlighting the sump a little bit. Um, I really like using inks for this um, other than paint at this stage. Um, I, they can be thinned, and this is very thin down. Um, I use a one of my uh, my cheap airbrush to get this going, and to be perfectly honest, I think I clogged it beyond repair. <laughs> this job, um, now some fast camera work here. Sorry, guys, I'm still getting used to this whole setup here, and I don't even have a camera yet. This is still just my phone. Um, so the next steps is pretty much just the straight gray. And what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking away the metal paint or covering up the metal paint that uh, ended up going on the wall. Um, oh, no, actually, this is still just highlighting areas um, with the white. Uh, haven't gotten to the gray yet. Sorry, that's the next step. Um, yeah, basically just coming from, you know, a 45 or a 60 degree angle, you know, down. Um, it just gives a little bit more highlight color. When you're using inks, they don't cover. They just saturate with color. So you can see just about everything underneath it. Um, I'm going to be going over this with crazy amounts of oils and later steps. Um, and this is all just prep and setup. Um, yeah, so I'll keep going here. Okay, now we're doing the gray. Um, yeah, so. This is going to be primarily on the wall. There's not going to be, not saying there's not going to be some overspray. Um, but yeah, this is kind of the first two stages to set up for the wall before the craziness ensues. The happy accident my son uh, helped me with when I did the first four sections of this wall. Um, <laughs> I'll get into those a little later. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm very big nowadays on uh, just keep putting layers on, even if you screw up. Um, as long as they're thin, you know, you can usually cover it up or just add on. Um, I know these seem like a long bunch of steps here for this just to get this thing prepped. But, you, you know, it, the more you do here, the less you have to do as far as the... Uh, any kind of the detail work and things like that simply because you're setting your shadows at this point um yeah there was a lot of metal paint when i did the spray prime with the rattle cans um, that oversprayed on the walls which you would figure would happen but um the more work i do here just to set things up uh for when i start adding actual colors to it um, the better it's all going to end up happening. Um, this is all going to be varnished several times um, afterwards. Anyways, so um, one of the things I discovered when I did get an airbrush. Okay, here we go. And this is where the Sump, Sump City Shack's going to be. I obviously don't have um, it on here because we're working on the wall. And my camera works getting a little better as this progresses, although my airbrush seems to be clogging more as this progresses. But yeah, this is just pretty much 
getting the wall going here and I'll uh, keep going here. <music> Okay, so now we're on to the Happy Axe stick. So the palette that I'm using, because I don't bother wasting money on paletting anymore, um, is just a cardboard piece wrapped in wax paper, which works just fine for a wet pa or for a dry palette. Um, these are just craft paints. So, anyways, the first versions of these wall builds, um, I had everything ready. And I came home from work the next day, getting ready to start on painting it, and my son had helped. Um, <laughs> this turned into a happy accident because basically what's going on here, and what I'm doing, concrete is not one solid color, it never is. Um, if you actually take a good look at it, it's kind of like weathering and rust effects. Um, I have gone away from the target weathering idea, um, you know, with, with streaking and things like that. That naturally happens. So what he did was he basically did a whole bunch of sponge brush painting with the cheap paints to help me out. And I had to cover it up. This was one of the ways that I actually got the this done. So now what we do is, you know, you blotch, you can pick whatever color you want. You can use whatever paint you want. Now, well, I suppose don't use oils because um, those take forever to dry doing that blotching stuff. But then what we're going to do is we're going to start going over with grays and then we're going to level up with um, adding drops of white to it. We're working at, you know, 45, 60 degree angle and we're targeting uh, the spots. Um, now, you can see here, the ink doesn't cover well, um, which is good and which is bad. It depends on how you do your projects, I guess. Um, like I said, the longer I take on this and the more careful or the more things that I add here, the more easier it's going to be as we go on. Um, look, good shots of my arm there. Um, yeah. It is, uh, if you are an airbrush user, this is an actual point when you want to put that stupid cap on. Um, otherwise, you really dump paint all over the place, which I did and, you know, film edited. Hey, look at that talent showing up. But as you can see, you can still see those colors underneath here. But what's going on is I'm spotting and where the brush goes will be where the eyes go. That's the way it's turned out. Um, so what ends up happening is this gets more color saturation. That's after the first coat. So now we added a couple of drops of white and we're gonna hit things again. Uh, this is white with gray. I already have gray paint in the, the or uh, gray ink in the, uh, the airbrush. Um, and then we're just gonna hit the spots again as you can see, they're slowly disappearing. Now they don't disappear completely. Um, I really like how this turned out on the video. <laughs> Surprisingly enough, um, this is one of those things that, you know, you, you have a plan, you're going with a plan and, and it wasn't quite working out the way that I wanted it to. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, this turned out really great on the video because that's, those are nice. That's very, very nice because this might be, I believe this is my final highlight step to the concrete. Everything after this um, is going to be uh, shadowing effects, which is another thing that I found out um, as my 
journey, my hobby journey and painting journey has continued with some of these big pieces. Um, the shadows count a lot more than the highlights do, um, which is interesting because modeling or with, with little figures, it's kind of opposite to a certain extent. Um, the shadows on this count a lot more than the highlights do. Highlights are real easy and then bringing forth the shadows is what makes the shape works. Um, yeah, here we go. Yeah. All right, I guess we're gonna do one more. This is even more white again. And this is where the airbrush kind of started failing me a bit. I'm in a process of deep cleaning at this point, so you don't get to see very much of this part. And yeah, that's what they really ghost. And you can still see the colors. Don't get me wrong, you can still see the colors, but it, uh, yeah, okay. So now we're coming in with a darker gray over the low spots. And this is going to shape things up. Um, I am, uh, I do apologize. I have a little bit of poor camera work because I got, well, my big head's in the way. Um, okay, one other thing I wanted to bring up. You will notice I am not wearing a mask. Um, there is a tremendous fan behind me blowing, you know, from the back of my head. That's why I started with a short sleeve shirt and ended up with my uh, uh, sweatshirt on because it was starting to get cold. Um, yeah, all of the paint is blow. Any any overspray is blowing, you know, the other way um, into my basement, which is fine. You know, um, I've been handling stuff like this for years, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people get over overly complicated about things like that. But you know, um, you know, whatever. Th this is safe. Don't worry. I'm uh, not gonna kill myself by inhaling. Of watery ink but uh, yeah so this is bringing forth the first shadow steps and here I figured out that I can just move my tripod <laughs> so yeah and I wanted to thank everybody who's been uh, who subscribed and thank you so much uh, for everybody that's viewed all this stuff I'm, uh, I'm it's amazing. Um, yeah, you can start seeing some of the colors in the concrete mesh together when when this starts. But when we start with the oils pretty soon here, um, there will be, you know, it'll just disappear. I'm goes right in and makes it look just like concrete. But anyways, the wall now looks doesn't look too much like metal anymore. And uh we're going to be on to the next steps soon here. Thank you so much, guys. Have a good night.